Hello. <laughs> so what is today? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, see? This it's uh if you're if you're a sports fan, then you answered it's Super Bowl Sunday. And if you're not, then you said Groundhog's Day or my dad's birthday or something like that. It is my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Groundhog's Day makes it easy to remember. And now the best is the title, and that's a good title for today, for Super Bowl Sunday. See, I'm a sports fan, so that's, that's what my answer is. Broncos versus the Seahawks. And uh, unlike previous, the, the last few Super Bowls, what's happened is there's a team that gets hot towards the end, and they, they become this kind of team of destiny that's fun to watch, like the Ravens last year. They weren't even good in the regular season. Somehow they make the playoffs and then psh, all the way through to the Super Bowl. And the Giants before them, Steelers, Packers, all these teams like that. This year that's not the case. We have the two best teams. They've been the best teams all regular season and here they clash. And so it's time for the best. Super Bowl Sunday is time to show your best, right? Whether you're a coach, a player, a singer, a dancer, a commercial writer, a commercial actor. You need, the, you need to be on top of your game today. It's Super Bowl Sunday, no excuses. And Chuck Morgan um, is in the Super Bowl now. Yeah, right? Yeah, last, uh, there's some family here, Janice and Marianne. Uh, last Sunday he went to big church, Chuck did, yes. And at his viewing, John, his son, George W. Bush, as you may know him, he was an, an imposter, impersonator. Uh, he <laughs> not, That wasn't a political comment. John literally dressed up like George Bush, and he, went to, he was traveling the country at one point, um, doing it so well. And so when he talks to you, you listen. You're looking at him like... He's even got the mannerisms still, you know. And what he said was, he said, you guys at OCC, you got Chuck at his best, is what he said. And, uh, and what he meant by that, and because and, I was wondering, probably looking at him like, yeah, the best. He was, <laughs> he was wonderful, but he was a little rascal half the time. So what do you mean, what do you mean by that exactly? And what he said was, well, Chuck, what you saw at OCC is Chuck all in, in his faith in Jesus. He, he was truly living by faith. What he said was, what happened uh, was the Oklahoma City bombing for him, for Chuck, just, just was overwhelming to him. Uh, having served in, in the military and, and the, uh, experiencing the, the victory of, of uh, World War II, having flown missions over Italy, and just amazing stories. And his pictures are, are the pictures are just amazing of Chuck. But that, that event, the Oklahoma City bombing, broke him out of this. It, it burst his, his our all of our imaginary balloon of permanence and safety and he he was really rattled by it and then he said John said that Chuck said I'm gonna start living like you guys which is Janice Marianne John Becky I'm gonna start and Eileen of course I'm gonna start living by faith he finally he, he, he came to that point where he said it's I can't do it otherwise there's, there's no other place. That's the solid rock. Everything else is sinking sand, and I'm going to stand on it from now on. And so we've got Chuck at his best, and I, that, I love that. Not a perfect man, and none of us are. Notice I didn't bring up women. I'm not going there. Um, not a perfect man, but he lived by faith. Now, Jesus... And his brand new disciples, three days later, it says, they've traveled from Jordan, the Jordan River down here, and they've traveled up to Galilee. 
and they were invited to a wedding. And they went to the wedding. And a wedding is the ladies' version of the Super Bowl, correct? There's, we have, the guys have Super Bowl, ladies have weddings. We watch football, they watch Bridezilla and, you know. <laughs> a, a wedding is time for your best, right? You, it, it's, it's time for your best, just like the Super Bowl. It's, it's the big moment, the cameras are flashing, it's, it's our taste of uh, maybe what a Super Bowl would be like, that much, yeah, as much tension as we're maybe gonna ever get in our life. And it's not time to run out of wine, is it? No, that is not bringing your best to the table. You don't, you don't have a Super Bowl party and run out of nachos, right? <laughs> this is uh, what we're talking about here. It's embarrassing for the host. It's like missing the, the field goal at the end of the game. That's, that's going to stick in, in people's minds. So the, the wine is symbolic here because wine represented God's blessing, God's abundance. And, and you see this in the Bible. They celebrated the new wine. They celebrated that somehow they have this vine growing in the sand and somehow God provides for it as... as as farmers can celebrate, that they know that God must bring this. And so they would celebrate, and, and in Isaiah, what happens, what can happen too is um, there's God's blessing in the wine, and then there's also God's curse if you don't have wine. And so a famine or some kind of uh, blight to the crops, uh, and they could not have wine. Or sometimes God even would send in the enemy... Or, or lift the defenses, the enemy would come in and take the wine, take the harvest. So wine is symbolic of a, of a blessing or a curse. And in Isaiah, God says, if you, if you disobey my law, I will stop your celebrations. I will put a halt to your new wine. You will see that you're not being blessed. But then in Isaiah, as we know, there's woe and then there's comfort. He comforts Israel. This is not always going to be the case. And today, uh, we're going to have Sandy read portions of Isaiah 62 in connection with, with John, as we've seen. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies, and never again foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest it will but those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. So you see that promise in Isaiah. I have po I have post I'll, I'm gonna let you read that okay. one later. Okay. You're doing great though. Thank you. So Jesus' mom is there, and there's this pressure, precious interaction between mom and son that we see here, isn't it? It's so real. This, <laughs> you know, if you need evidence that the Bible is real, look at this little conversation here. They're not making this stuff up. This is the way a mom and a son sound. There's a lot of communications in between the lines here, because there's not a lot of words. Mom says they're running out of wine, and son says, what is that to us? She then looks at him, right? <laughs> and then he comes up, well, it's not my time yet. She looks at him again, and then he changes his expression, and then she goes to the servants and says, do whatever he says, okay? Okay. Not a lot of words, but a lot of communication going on right there. And it's my humble interpretation that Jesus is making excuses. Okay? He's relaxing. He's saying, Ma, don't boss me in front of my new friends, okay? These guys are... <laughs> but Mom, see, Mom knew what he was capable of. 
and mom's not going to accept any excuses. Moms are watchdogs. They know what's going on. Moms will snoop. You ever, when you're living at, at home, what do you, mom, what are you doing? I'm cleaning. I'm going through your, my mom was more worried about Katie than me, and, and if Katie left, left the house, then mom seemed to clean her room at that particular time. Mm. And then when you're out of the house, then they do the pop by, the unannounced pop by. If you if you live in town, you ever had that one? Yeah, yeah. See what you're up to. Just checking in. <laughs> My mom would bring food though, so that was actually uh, perfectly okay with me. I was willing to, whatever damages were done were were worth it, because you got the lasagna out of it. It's like... Okay. This is Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, please. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Okay, God has posted watch moms on the wall. Okay, and they're looking after us. They're on the wall. They know what's going on. And you know what? They are giving the Lord no rest. The moms are giving the Lord no rest. They're praying for us in that way. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you want a mom like that that gives the Lord no rest? Watch out for my baby. They won't ex accept our lame excuses, will they? My mom was always with Murray my mom knew immediately, and she's always like, that one, that one, go, go, be with her, hurry up, what are you waiting for, seal the deal, put the ring on the finger, you know, she knew, and thank you, mom, and, and we, we thank our moms for this, for being the watch moms over us, for knowing exactly what we're capable of and then pushing us to be that, because... Mary knew. The angel Gabriel told her. We sing that song, Mary, Did You Know? It's a nice song, but I'm always like, yeah, she knew. I don't, you know, I guess, you know, she knew. She, she did. She was told. You, you, I think you remember an experience when an angel comes and tells you. And Jesus responded and he obeyed his mom. See, Jesus, good job. He left his comfort zone. Now, the stone jars are symbolic as well because it says they were for ceremonial purification, for ceremonial washing. Which, what's that connected to? The old, the old covenant, the law. And it's kind of symbolic of what the people had turned the law into, this old hard relic that was cultural and spiritually dead. They were empty, too. Remember, they weren't full of water. They were empty. So maybe they weren't even being used. Jesus had to say, fill them up with water. Then he turned the water into wine. So here are these symbols of the Old Covenant. And not that the law was bad. It's, it's a gift. But the people had turned it into stone. And then... Jesus had him turned into, he, he had the, the water turned into wine, good wine. And it says the master, the master of the ceremony isn't like the uh, bride's father. This word actually means the top servant, okay? The top chef who is really picky. And so that's why the wine was served to him, the, the head of the catering company. This is, you know, picky Pete here. And he tasted the wine, and he said, this stuff is better than what you started with. That's very unusual. He turned it into good wine. Jesus' wine represents the new covenant. It represents the blood that does cleanse, not an exterior cleanse of water, but an internal transformation, forgiveness, a true cleanse from sin, and then the empowerment of the Spirit to help us live, to give us life. 
to break us free from the power of sin, to give us eternal life. It's the greater gift. He turned the old covenant into the new wine, the new covenant. John said earlier, law was given through Moses. The law was the gift of Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And we still have to be alive to it. Otherwise, we become stone. And we're stone mugs holding this wine. And then the wedding is symbolic too because the Old, the old Testament speaks of the Old Covenant as an agreement, a covenant as an agreement, but it also speaks of it as a marriage. It's a marriage covenant. But Israel was an unfaithful wife, breaking the laws, breaching the covenant, breaking her vows, and God was angry. But God doesn't abandon Israel. God doesn't abandon the unfaithful wife. What we have is he has this plan, and Isaiah starts to portray this, this plan of restoration, of a renewal of vows, of a new wedding. This is 62, 1 through 5. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. The nations will see your righteousness World leaders will be blinded by your glory, and you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see, a splendid crown in the land of God. Never again will you be called the forsaken city or the desolate land. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God, for the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. Your children will commit themselves to you, O Jerusalem, just as a young man commits himself to his bride. Then God will rejoice over you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. So this is the new covenant, the new marriage. And, and a wedding is an ideal setting for Jesus' first miracle because of this, because of this idea that there will be a new covenant, a new wedding, new vows that won't be based on us but by the blood of Jesus and his spirit. Jesus brought by this first miracle and by what Jesus did on the cross, Jesus was initiating this new covenant we now live in the age of the new covenant. We're in the wedding. This is the time of the wedding, see? There's a eternal banquet reception to follow. But the new covenant has been established, and we live in those days. We live in the day of the wedding. Today's the wedding day. Today's the Super Bowl. It's time for your best. This is John 2.11. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. They put their faith in him. And the first time is an interesting word in Greek. It's ark. And if you know anything about, uh, if you ever studied storytelling or writing, you know that every story, every movie, every play, it has an arc. The, char the main character has an arc, a new beginning. Something changes, and that's what they call it in storytelling, an arc. And in our lives, in our life stories, there's lots of arcs. For Chuck, it was Oklahoma City. One of his arcs was the Oklahoma City bombing where he, he lost his confidence in man and put his faith in God. For Jesus, it was a little nudging from Ma. It's time, Jesus. You're grown now. 
you know, I know who you are, and so do you. It's time to go. It's time to begin this thing. For me, it was my mom nudging me. I had lots of arcs in my story. My mom nudging me. It's, it's time to marry Murray. Let's go. <laughs> what are you waiting for? It was God's divided sky saying, pick one, darkness or light, where are you headed? It's, it's monarch, it's OCC, there's, there's arcs in our life. Is there an arc in your life right now? Is God doing something new? It is Groundhog's Day, it is my dad's birthday, happy, happy birthday, Dad. Uh, and when you think of Groundhog's Day, I don't know about you, but I think of the Bill Murray movie. <laughs> do, do you not? And uh, it, it, it was fantastic. And, but are you going to live the same day over and over? Is that what our life is? You know, you, do, you, you, you go to a, a funeral, someone you know dies, and one of the things that you learn from that is life is precious. Every day is important. There's no, this isn't Groundhog's Day. Every, it, we can't live the same day over and over. God puts arcs in our life. We're going along like this and boom. Does he have one for you? Are you on one? It's time to be our best and live by faith. Life is too short. It's not time for excuses. This is Isaiah 62, 10 through 12. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accomp accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. All right, so what we want to do is take a few moments of reflection time about where is God calling you to be your best right now? And then we'll worship. So spend a few minutes in prayer and reflection, listening. God's present. He's been welcomed here. Two or three have gathered in his name. Where is he calling you to be your best? <laughs> 